And we're on the air with Dr. Carrie D'Ambrosio. Carrie is, is a physical therapist, doctor of osteopathy and oriental medicine. He's been practicing, gosh, probably for about 20-some years now. And 30 years. <laughs> whoa, 30 years. Jeez. 30 years. That's incredible. That's fantastic. All right, Carrie. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. Um, the reason why I asked Kerry to come on today was because his knowledge and experience with not just the Western medicine, but Eastern medicine and the combination of the two together is just astounding. And uh, I, I really think that more people need to uh, know what goes on when it comes to trying to help somebody with their uh, therapy, whether it be physical therapy or uh, any other issues that might be impeding on their performance, as well as their uh, general health. So, Kerry, um, tell me, where are you from? I'm from originally Toronto, Canada, and I now live in uh, Sarasota, Florida, sunny Sarasota, Florida. Oh, beautiful area. Love Siesta Key Beach. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful right now. Actually, we're getting a lot of rain right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> it's summertime, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're right in the tennis mecca. Yes, I treat, actually, I've treated a lot of uh, tennis players. I used to go on the tour. I used to work with Monica Sellis and Mary Pierce, and I would prepare them to play the match. And then after they'd play, you'd work with them afterwards, because sometimes due to rain delays, they had to play each day. And, you know, as they get older, the player, they need more and more work, you know, just to, uh, you know, to get them ready for the next day. Wow, that is awesome. So when you try to prepare these athletes, what are some of the things that uh, they ask you to, to do? Well, they're usually you're there as a private uh, kind of therapist. And the thing that I do is I do a full body evaluation. I check them from head to toe. And I'm looking for any type of tension from their legs, their arms, their head and neck that would enter their torso. Um, one of the key things I look at are diaphragms, and, and uh, like your respiratory diaphragm. These diaphragms are like your pelvic floor uh, right around your shoulder area. These are kind of horizontal, transverse in nature. And if these things are restricted, they affect the vertical flow of your energy, your blood flow, your nerve flow, you know, all these different things. So, I, you know, I look, at, uh, I look at their whole body, and that's what they appreciate. Um, you know, when somebody comes in, for example, you know, with a shoulder problem, most practitioners out there just look at the shoulder. And that's basically due to Cartesian theory, which is from Europe. They also call it uh, mechanistic theory or reductionism. So it's the way, you know, I don't know, I guess in Canada they have workers' comp, and it's similar to U.S. If, if someone on workers' comp came to me with a shoulder problem, we're only allowed to look at the shoulder, nothing else. And you have like six visits. You and I both know that there are a lot of things that can affect a, a shoulder. Oh, yes. And one, yeah, I mean, you've done a lot of energy medicine. I mean, your body is composed of four types of tissues. You know, your skin, which is called endothelial tissue, your muscles, your nerve, and connective tissue. If you take any one of those tissues and put it under a microscope, you're going to see the cells of those tissues. If you zoom in on those cells, you're going to see little organelles like a mitochondria, you know, ribosome, nucleus, things like that. If you zoom on any one of those, you know, mic as a microscope, you're going to see molecules are made up of molecules. And a molecule is basically made up of uh, atoms, two or more atoms. And atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, electrons. So what we're trying to say is that your, any one of your tissues in your body is basically made up of empty space. Your body is 99.9999% empty space and consciousness. I've certainly so, been told that in the brain with my, uh, my teachers over the years. A lot of empty say space. That, say that again? My teachers in the past definitely have told me that. A lot of empty space up there. <laughs> but it makes it exciting for us because you have to play detective. Like, for example, you know, shoulder is a good example. Is uh, I've, I had this, um, uh, he's a baseball player for uh, Florida, the College of the Gators, and he had a bad shoulder. He's a pitcher. And he went all over the place during the beginning of the summer and finally, you know, got to our clinic. And I look at his whole body from head to toe, and, and they just had treatment on his shoulder. They do ultrasound, electrical stim, rotator cuff exercises, things like that. 
we looked at his whole body and you could see his whole body was twisted. You know, his legs were involved, his pelvis, everything. And so what we do at our clinic is we look at the whole body, mind, body, spirit. And, you know, when you look at something like a shoulder, if there is something local going on, you know, we look at, you know, what are the different parts of a shoulder? You know, you have muscles, joint, fascia, connective tissue, nerves, arteries, veins, lymphatics, but also energy and emotions. Sometimes people store emotions and, and belief systems and consciousness. So, we, you know, we look at that in depth. We look locally at the shoulder, but we also look at other areas that could be affecting it, you know, in the body. So we're very thorough that way. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, there's there's got to be so much more to it than just the weakest link that's falling apart, right? Yeah, I mean, there there's so many different things. You know, we look at it from a manual therapy perspective, um, but also from strengthening. I know you've done a lot of strengthening in, in your past and, and uh, you know, yourself personally and with your clients. But, you know, core core strength is important. So we look at muscle imbalances as well. You know, you have to look at, you know, strength, conditioning, flexibility, but also uh, manual therapy. And another part is ergonomics, is how they use their body. And I would say, you know, there's a great book I read. It's over 2,000 years old. It's called The Yellow Emperor's Book. And it's about a student talking to the master. And it's written over 3,000 years ago. And it applies today. And he's asking the master, he says, if I want to have health, what do I need? And the key thing he says is you need a good night's sleep because that's how your body repairs. You need to don't overindulge, right? You need to exercise. You need to eat well. And uh, meditation is also important. These are things I also, you know, talk to my patients about. You know, there's a book I read 30 years ago. It's called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. And this guy, Joel Wallach, wrote it. And he says it that way because a lot of doctors die off in their 60s. 60s and low 70s. So he says, don't do what they're doing. And he, he was... He was amazed to find out. He was a veterinarian, actually. Then he became an naturopath. And so what happened with him is he noticed that animals get the same diseases as human beings, but they treat them differently because these farmers and ranchers don't have the money to give them Western medicine, so they do preventative medicine. And he found out that this worked for those animals. And he goes, well, why aren't people doing that? So one of the things that I advocate with my patients is nutrition. You know, they got to have the nutrition. they got to, uh, you know, meditate. We look at ergonomics, we look at exercise, and we incorporate the energy medicine as well as the manual therapy. That's awesome. You will definitely want to give them the complete care because uh, any one of those things or any combination of those things can certainly be the issue. Oh, definitely, yeah. And, it, you know, and any one of those things can be the priority. You know, non, you know, one isn't more important than the other. You know, everyone is an individual, yeah. That, that's, you know, that's why protocols don't work. You can have you know, kind of guiding principles, and you have to look at each individual. Like for us, you know, we, uh, you know, at this clinic, we believe that, you know, uh, every one of us, we're a dynamic unit of function. And by the word dynamic, we mean that your body is constantly changing. Your liver right now, the cells of your liver are going to be different 120 days from now. You're a unit, meaning mind, body, and spirit. So if you've got something that's affecting you right now, headaches, shoulder pain, back pain, and you're just getting worked on, you know, physically, it may not be enough because we are an integrated unit. The other thing that's extremely important, and as an acupuncturist and an osteopath we believe in, it's a phrase called the rule of the artery is supreme. And what that means is that in order for your body to heal, it could be, let's say, your knee, for example, in order for it to heal, it needs blood supply. And then that blood carries oxygen and nutrition. But it also needs energy supply. It needs nerve supply. More importantly, in order for it to get it, if you had a swollen knee and, and a lot of tension around there, how's it going to get all that? So more importantly, it needs drainage. So we talk about lymphatic drainage, venous drainage, energy drainage. So at our clinic, we look locally at where your, your complaint is. But one of the key things that we look at is what is the pathway to health? How does the body heal? Is that pathway clear? And if it is, your body will get the nutrients, the oxygen, the nutrients it needs in order to heal. And when I do manual therapy, it's basically to create a better environment, you know, for this to take place. I had um, a lady come to me, actually one of my classes, she had an open wound on the bottom of her foot. And typically when people have do wound care, they put them in, in, in whirlpool tubs, um, 
and, and they try to clean it, debride it, you know, clean it out, and they use laser. Laser's used a lot. But this woman wasn't getting better. So they brought her to the class, and we evaluated her. And if you go by what I just said, the pathway to healing, well, how does that foot, how does the bottom of that foot get blood supply to heal or even energy supply? So you can trace it from the heart all the way down the leg to that foot. But what happened was it wasn't getting it properly because there was a lot of congestion. That leg, that right leg, was much heavier than the other leg, and all those diaphragms I talked about were all blocked up. And one thing that's interesting is if you look at the anatomy you know, of a blood vessel, it has three layers. It has endothelial cells, which is like a membrane. It has smooth muscle, then it has connective tissue. The smooth muscle is under the control of your nervous system. And if you have people that are on sympathetic overload, people that are really strung out, what happens is you get constriction of those blood vessels. So we have to look at their behavior you know, what they're doing because if they're, you know, people that are always tense all the time and, and always late for appointments and, you know, speeding in the cars, eating too fast, they're going to have constriction in there. It's called fight or flight, and that affects them. And she was all locked up with that. So all we did was, was opened up all those avenues, and all of a sudden she started to respond, you know, to healing. So we really look into uh, how does your body heal energetically as well as physiologically. That's incredible. Because, uh, you know, especially uh, coming from the sports background that I have and uh, the amount of shoulder issues from contact sports over the years, <laughs> I would only get uh, the shoulder looked at. And if it was a rotator cuff issue, they would look at just that and not look at anywhere else that might be twisted. And those other factors that you mentioned, I mean, when it comes to, you know, athletes, a lot of times they are definitely strung out. You know, the, they are working really hard. They're trying to do more than what they are used to so that they can grow, but sometimes they don't give themselves that recovery period. Yeah, overtraining, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now, you know what you said about the shoulder. One thing is um, in the shoulder, you need to look at the muscles, like you said, but people always miss the fascia. You know, people look at the joints, but also nerves, arteries, veins, lymphatics, energy flow. And you know as well as I do, you know, you've done body talk in the past, is we can hold emotions in there, consciousness, belief systems. There's something called downward causation. And what that means is your physical body is at the bottom. And there's a trickle-down effect. You're affected by that energy body I talked about, the emotions, uh, belief systems, consciousness, even other people's consciousness, like universal. You know, what's happening around the world affects us. I sometimes tell my patients, stop watching the news. You know, that kind of helps them because they're getting all stressed out about that. So that downward causation means is that we are physical beings. We live on this planet, and you can feel it, you know, when you evaluate your patients. But if you just get worked on physically, sometimes that's not enough because these other influences can affect the physical body. It's a downward effect, not an upward effect. So your beliefs, your emotions, everything around you can affect you. And I always have this phrase I always say is before you tear down a wall, you know, that wall could be the tension in your neck or your shoulder. Find out how that wall was built in the first place. You know, you have, that's why, for me, evaluation is so important. If I only had 20 minutes to work with a patient, I would spend 15 minutes evaluating and five minutes treating, and you're going to be more focused. Oh, exactly. you got to find out what you're doing first, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great analogy with the wall because you certainly don't want to uh, tear down a load-bearing wall. <laughs> and you know, yeah. And you know, the other thing that's important too, we forget, is that we are treating intelligent people. Is that you know, you had breakfast this morning, you had lunch. I'm hopefully going home for dinner, and we don't have to think about how our body, you know, digests this or break it down. Our bodies know how to do it, even if you don't know how to do it intellectually. And because of that, when we treat, we only have to do enough, and their body will do the rest. We don't have to do everything. So that's the art behind it. You know, the, the key questions we always ask as a practitioner when somebody comes in with a problem, like a shoulder, for example, where do I treat, right? Do I treat the shoulder or do I treat somewhere else? That's right. And when I, when I go there is what do I treat? You know, what tissue am I treating? Muscle, joint, fascia, fluid, energy, emotions, whatever. And then, you know, how do I progress? How do I measure these changes? I had a woman, um, she was from Montreal, and she came down to Florida on vacation, and she had neck pain for 10 years. Oh, wow. And she was treated locally for 10 years. 
if you can visualize this, you know, just, you know, your viewers, think of somebody lying on their back, let's say on a table, and I'm standing at the head, and I'm trying to pick up um, her neck, and I can hardly move it. But what happened was she had injured her left foot in a car accident, and she had like four surgeries. When you looked at her left foot, it was like a club foot. She still had stuff oozing out after 10 years, believe it or not. And she had a bandage wrapped around it. When I picked up her right leg, it was fine. It was light. It could move. When I picked up the left leg, which is where her tension was, it was so much heavier. What I did is I asked her to bend that knee. When she bent that knee, I could move her neck everywhere. That means that there was a line of tension and muscles and fascia coming from that left foot, from that injury 10 years ago, all the way up to her head and neck. And nobody looked at that. Everybody looked at where she was complaining of. So we released that. We call that a lesional chain. And it was just one visit. And all of a sudden, she's just in tears. She goes, I can't believe, you know, I took 10 years of treatment. And that's what we see in our, we see that again and again and again, is that the biggest mistake I see people make is they treat the site of pain instead of looking back to see, well, why is it there? What's happening to it biomechanically? And looking at the whole body. And I remember when I was at osteopathic school, my teacher would always say, it's more important to know the patient who has a dysfunction than the dysfunction that has the patient. They have a story, and you have to be a detective to see what's happening. Yeah, exactly. That, that's an excellent way to put it, by being able to figure out um, if you have to start from the issue, like from the pain, or go towards the pain, or any combination. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, all those different layers that you mentioned. Uh, that's going to be huge in uh, helping them get to where they really want to be. And you know what's important is that when you are treating these people, you really have to ask them an important question. And you ask your patient, how are you going to know I helped you? I know you do that because you do a lot of sessions and that. that's one of the first questions that you ask. Right. And I think for your listeners, is it's a key thing. If you're going to go, if, if a chiropractor is going to treat you or a physical therapist, osteopath, whatever, it's important for you, how are you going to measure the success of that treatment? And I know how we do it as practitioners. You know, we look at pain. We use a 0 to 10 scale. We look at range of motion, you know, muscle strength, um, you know, tenderness, you know, all sorts of manual therapy evaluations. But they don't mean anything to the patient. The key thing that, that a patient focuses on is really activities of daily living, getting in and out of bed, in and out of a car, reaching, putting on, you know, dressing themselves, washing themselves, or walking or getting or going up and down stairs or, or playing a sport using their arms and legs. So they got to find a, a functional way of measuring the success of treatment. And if you're a practitioner listening to this, you need to ask that question because you could do a great job with that patient in your office. And when they leave you and they go do something else and, and they may not, um, you know, think of you as the person that made the significant changes in their body because they went to an exercise class, they went over here, they went there. So it's important when you work with them, I always reevaluate. I'm always clear with them, you know, these are the changes we made. And, and make sure they understand that whatever we did that day made the effects on their body. Yeah, exactly. Doing some before and afters like you did with the uh, that woman's leg, showing her oh, yeah. what it's like with the, with the leg straight compared to bending the knee, and then showing her afterwards. I mean, that's that's huge. Uh, when you um, helped me change my uh, the way that I do things um, by helping that dancer in uh, Seattle. Oh, it was yeah. Incredible. Yeah. She was ready to do the splits afterwards, and she had been hobbling <laughs> for two months, she said. <laughs> but, you know, when I teach classes, you know, um, when I bring pay, or students up and I evaluate them, we do something and reevaluate them, It's and I have the students come up and evaluate with me, and that's the key thing. They get excited, you know, by that. And that's how, you know, people always ask me, like, I have a busy practice here. I have about six other therapists that work for me. We don't advertise at all. And we are slammed. And I've never advertised. And it's usually word of mouth. And, and how you build a practice, I think, is is through evaluation, reevaluation, but also an effective treatment that's focused on the cause of their problems. And if you can get them to tune into that and see those changes, they're going to sell your clinic for you. They're going to go around and tell everybody. I mean, I, I treat... You know, wives, women tend to come in mostly, but then they get their husbands in, next show their kids are in, then their friends are in, and they do the selling for me. So, you know, it's so important to, to measure is outcomes, basically, and that's how your business grows. You know, you, you know, 
I got to hire more therapists here. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so <when it laughs> Always a good to, problem to have. Oh, no kidding, right? <laughs> when it comes to, let's say, the most unique case that you've ever had to uh, treat, what happened? Let's see. Most unique. Oh, I'll tell you what. I had a, a patient. His name was, I can use his name because we've written it in a book, actually. His name was Jeff Gray. And he was a baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. Okay. And he was their closer. And this is going back probably, geez, over, I'd say, 25 years ago. It's when I, um, just shortly after I got out of school, 25, 26 years ago. And so I, I had I'd studied lots of different approaches. And it's interesting, I met him, and I took my daughter to the playground and, and I saw him coming there and he had a cane and he was walking funny and I was chatting with him. I didn't know who he was, didn't know he was a celebrity. And he started talking about his problem. He was at Braintree Hospital. And I remember he said that a physical therapist said that he'll never play baseball again. You know, be lucky if he does normal activities of daily living. And me being a green therapist, you know, new graduate, <laughs> I'm there and I'm talking to him because I, I knew all this things, craniosacral, myofascial, all these different things. And I said, yeah, we can help you, no problem. Why, I don't see any reason why you can't go back and play baseball. <laughs> so anyways, we brought him into the clinic, and I didn't know any better. That was probably the best part of it. And I just started working with him. I just started, I, you know, I started working on his body, his legs, his arms, his head. I, I would release spasms using the techniques, you know, positional release therapy, craniosacral therapy, because he had a stroke. And I did things to get rid of the swelling and, and get rid of any type of uh, adhesions in his brain. And what was amazing is that slowly we started to get him back. He started to, he, he actually lost the, the extra weight for not uh, playing. He started to get stronger. He started to get functional range of motion. And then we got him starting to throw the ball. And it was amazing. I met the manager for the Red Sox at the airport. And he goes, Jeff, you're doing much better, but this is probably the best you're going to go. And we're looking, now we want to get you back. And we got written up in Sports Illustrated a few times. I've kept all the articles. Oh. And, there, and this story is in a book. Um, it's at the Upledger Institute. I think it's their book called Miracles or something. But anyways, we got him all the way back to AAA. Nice. And he was throwing his, the ball 85 miles an hour and that. And he ended up, I had to leave because I'm, I'm Canadian and I was living in the States, but I had a sponsor. And I had left my rotation and I was moving away to Texas, so I couldn't finish this job. But I got him all the way to AAA. And he played there for a while, and he ended up being a pitching coach. And we're still in touch to, to this day. I think he's a financial uh, advisor. But what, it was an incredible story. I mean, I threw everything at him. And just his will. You know, I'll tell you one thing. You know, we talked about all these body parts. But you know the number one lesion? Spirit. Uh, People have, If you have spirit, you can conquer anything. This guy, I would say, had spirit. He he needed to get better. He wanted to get better. And when you have a, a conviction like that, oh, my God, is it so much fun to work with. Because you can have some people, they'll do the, the, you know, they do the talk, but they don't do the walk. And, it, and if you're working with someone who's not motivated, you know, it is so much, it's so difficult. Oh, but exactly. I remember that with him. He, the spirit is so important. You're totally right. Uh, for myself, I had uh, a gentleman who, uh, had uh, he has a disease that only one other person in the country has and he uh, basically woke up one day and could not move from the chest downward he had inflammation going on throughout his spine and uh, by the time I met him he was already uh, shuffling his feet with a cane working seven days a week <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> and, but he was he wanted to be able to run and skate with his kids uh, that were young at the time and uh -huh. he had no uh, uh, no, um, basically, n the only thing that was keeping him around was his spirit because uh, every day he didn't know if he was going to be able to have um, help to get himself up out of bed or if he could just um, make his way on his own. Uh, it was really just dependent on how much swelling was going on and where in the spine. And mm. uh, so we worked together for a few months, and then within four months, uh, he was running. And oh, wow. That's incredible. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. And then uh, after that, he uh, by the he, I saw him. It was uh, December. By the time it got to the next December, he went skating with his kids for the first time. And oh, that's amazing. Was, you should write a little story on that. 
it, it's really great. You know, his story that uh, he wrote for me is, is really awesome. And uh, I still, uh, this was, gosh, like 17, 18 years ago. And uh, hey. I still talk to him uh, a few times a year whenever I go back to uh, my hometown. We usually have coffee. I, you know, that's the best part when you can make a change in somebody's life like that. Isn't it amazing? Like, I, I love to see people make these changes, whether they're athletes or if it's, uh, like, for for me, one of the things that uh, really uh, opened my eyes was the 89-year-old woman who was on her third stroke in the hospital. I was mm. only in Windsor for ten day, or for seven days, and in that amount of time, she went from not being able to move her right side, anywhere on the right side of her body, mm-hmm. to um, walking with a walker to the... Um, uh, to the courtyard in the hospital and sit there for 15 minutes and have the strength to come back. I mean, it was oh, wow. three minutes to get her hand to function. It was 45 minutes to get her leg to kick. And she was doing five therapies a day. Uh, she was doing two with me and three with the ho- with the hospital. So that takes <clears throat> a ton out of you, and let alone being your third stroke at 89 years old. I mean, she's my hero. What type of work were you doing with her? I was doing um, some body talk, active release technique, and mm-hmm. I was doing some uh, PIMST to help her with her uh, to strength to balance out her strength. And then I did a little bit of your total body balancing, and mm-hmm. that really helped out as well. Once um, we got everything to start moving, I wanted to increase that range of motion, find out what was going on, and everything was led by body talk, trying to figure out what needs to happen when. Yeah. And, you know, that's what, um, when I teach in my courses, when somebody comes in, you know, with any of those things, you know, we've talked about um, today, is I do a screening examination because there's so many different things that can be going on. So if, let's say, that shoulder patient comes in, I screen the whole body. And then I'm like a lawyer. I'm trying to build a case. You know, is this, is this a local treatment? You know, do I treat it locally or is it a total body treatment? And if it's a local treatment, you know, we have ways to evaluate whether it's muscle, joint, fascia, fluid, or energy. And energy is is quite exceptional because I've got a busy practice now actually doing something, which you do, remote distance sessions. And, you know, I treat from my computer here. And I'll tell you how how I got it started is I was in Singapore, and uh, a therapist, another body talker named Tracy Clark, was in Toronto. And I would evaluate, uh, we did three patients, and she actually did her PhD on this. Uh, I evaluated three patients, and, I, and they filled out intake forms, and we, I emailed them one at a time to Tracy. And all she did was read the intake form, and then she would emailed me back saying she did it, and I would reevaluate the patient. And that, that's in Singapore, and she's in Toronto, Canada. Right. And as soon as she read the intake form, and I reevaluate the patient, there was changes already taking place in the patient's body. Their leg was moving better, arm was moving better, things were changed. And later on, as I started to study quantum physics, I found out that that's called entanglement. When you start to read and start to focus on that patient, your energy fields start to get entangled. And then Tracy would do um, uh, body talk and other energy work in Toronto, and then you know, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, she would email, say she was finished, Right away, I'd see more changes in the patient's body. And then she typed out exactly what she did. And then when the patient read it, all of a sudden, even more changes. So we see that there's an entanglement that takes place. You know, energy medicine does work. But when the patient's aware of what happens, even more significant changes. So it's quite exciting when you can treat somebody thousands of miles away like that and get results. Fantastic. I love doing that because it's so neat. Like you'll get, um, like yourself with the... Uh, with the emails back and forth, you know, people tend to think that, well, how are we going to communicate? Well, I'm going to let you know what's going on and what I had to work on. And then uh, you email me back how you're feeling, you know, what kind of changes you've noticed and stuff like that. And uh, it's amazing some of the feedback that you get sometimes. Like, how did you know that? (laughs) Well, I remember you did. You helped me when I was there one time. I think I had a, a shoulder or back prof, I what it was, but you asked me, you know, measure it on a scale from zero to 10, you know, what move, you know, you asked me what things aggravate it, and then you did your, your treatment, and then you would check back in with me, check in on this, and I could see a gradual, you know, improvement. Now, I'm going to be in um, 
Armstrong, British Columbia, actually, this weekend coming up. I'm going to be teaching there. Fantastic. And I'm teaching... Yeah, I'm teaching for the Body Talk organization. It's uh, it's called Biodynamics. It's uh, it's looking at um, Chinese medicine. It's looking at uh, uh, sports medicine. It's looking at all energy medicine, like how you'd make these changes. I'm going to be there, um, I guess, August 23rd to uh, the 26th. It's a four-day class. And Yanya, you know, she's my um, coordinator, Greenaway, over in Armstrong. And anyways... You know who uh, who's going to be there is Lucia. Lucia is like the animal whisperer, so yeah, I'm going to be exactly. staying with her. Yeah, you guys partnered up, went to um, Borneo. Went to Indonesia, Indonesia. Yeah. And we did the energy medicine. I was just teaching sharing that. We actually have a link, actually. I don't know if I've sent it to you. We, have a, we had a team of veterinarians come with us to Indonesia, and these are veterinarians who are neurosurgeons. I mean, they're the top in their field with you know multiple clinics from all over the world. And we looked at... Um, we worked on 16 male elephants in, in, in Sumatra, and we also worked on orangutans in Borneo. There were seven islands filled with them. And I'll tell you, the uh, what was amazing in Borneo, there was uh, this male uh, orangutan was very aggressive. It was uh, the male, and there was a female on the island, and he would just torture her, like throw her around and shake her out of these plastic drums and throw things at her. <laughs> and so anyways, we did a, a session on, on him through a surrogate, and we found out that he was from a zoo, he was mistreated, so very angry. But how, I'll tell you how effective this stuff is. We would, I would use a surrogate. I used one of the vets there to, to you know, sort of be focused as the um, king orangutan. And we had people all around us um, videotaping, taking notes, because what happens is I'm focused on the treatment, and I was on this wooden deck, and below us were all these fish. And they were going all over the place. And because we have so many observers, when I was actually doing the energy work, all the fish congregated right below me underneath the wooden um, beams. And then when the treatment was over, then they scattered away. People took pictures of it. They saw it. And this is what Lucia talks about. There's some kind of pause in nature, you know, when you start to work with these energy fields. But the cool thing that happened is that the... um, the behavior of this orangutan changed so significantly. He was like a choir boy. He was so docile. Oh, he didn't mistreat his uh, girlfriend. He didn't throw stuff. I mean, you could. I mean, they saw it was amazing. They go, "Oh my God, this significantly changed things." And we even when we worked with the elephants, Mahuts or the elephant trainers, you know, after we worked with these mind, body, spirits, you know, we worked with these um, elephants on energetic level. The Mahuts who know them intimately, they bathe them, they walk them, they feed them, they could see changes in their, their behavior and also how they move physically. It was very exciting work. Excellent. I'm so happy that all that happened so quickly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the energy, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have about three energy classes that I teach, the energetic balance, musculoskeletal, mind, body, and then the total body. And I'm I'm moving more and more to that realm because of how effective it is. It's just such an exciting uh, area to work with. It's amazing what can be done without actually having to physically start digging your elbows and thumbs into people when uh, when the timing is right and the, the, these people are ready to uh, let go of the crap that they've been dealing with, right? Yeah, I'll tell you how it happened with me. It was probably like six, seven years ago. I was teaching a class. And I was teaching a body talk class, but I was teaching um, fascia, how they could do my fascia release on the body. And there was a few uh, lay people in the class, and they said, I don't feel comfortable doing this on someone's body. Can you do it off the body? And I go, sure, why not? And they go, well, show us. And then there was a chiropractor, Dr. Lord. He's, he was uh, sitting in his 60s, 62. And he had a really bad right arthritic hip. And he goes, yeah, you can treat my hip. It's killing me. And everybody knows I like to evaluate. So the uh, physical therapist from uh, from Europe was there, and he evaluated him. And this guy, Dr. Lord's lying on his back, and when you pick up his leg, it should go all the way up 80 to 90 degrees, but it only went up 30 degrees. And he had very minimal rotation, and there was a lot of tension there. So I just had to make something up. I just kind of went in and, and observed, I call it an energetic hologram, and just started to observe it. And I started to follow it and then made a quick movement. When we were finished, this whole leg went from 30 degrees all the way up to 80 degrees, and and rotation drastically improved. And we had all this on video camera, which was nice. 
but that was my first exposure to this. And then from then, I've been, you know, developing these classes and, and, you know, studying quantum physics and just trying to figure out sort of what happened. What I did find out, which is interesting, is is your body, like we said, is those made up of those four tissues, which are made up of energy, is that energy can appear both in wave form and particle form. Oh, wow. When I when I feel your physical body, it's in particle form. I look at the asymmetry. I do range of motion. I can feel the denseness of it. But when I start to take out these holograms and observe them, what happens is that that particle form turns into wave form. When energy is in wave form, anything is possible. So it's incredible that we can, you know, make all these incredible changes, you know, working with quantum physics. Well, I remember when uh, I was in that class I mentioned before in Seattle, and uh, you were working on your wife. She was back in Florida, and she had this massive headache. And yeah. uh, you uh, were dealing with some of the fascia tissue with her that just wasn't sitting right, sitting properly. And uh, I was watching you do the work, and it was just fascinating to me how you were able to make those changes from what you were doing. And then um, every now and again, I kind of catch myself in similar motions with my hands, and right away I, I think of of you and what you're able to do. And it's, it's really incredible. I, I love this stuff and uh, what I've been able to learn from so many people over the years and then been able to actually work on people. It's just, it's so fascinating to see these changes. It's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, I'm totally, uh, I'm a manual therapist, you know, as an osteopath, physical therapist. I mean, I love working on people's bodies, just like, you know, when you worked on that lady, uh, that elderly woman, you know, and, and doing the TBB and all the, you know, the stretching you were doing and everything like that. I mean, I love that stuff. But I tell you what, this this uh, this energy work just blows my mind. I mean, you can, and I'll tell you what, it really works well. And you can have somebody come in. I had a, a guy 300 pounds, had back surgery, hip replacement, and he was just a mess. That's a manual therapist nightmare. And he was a retired school teacher. And he had two plates in his back and, and six screws, you know, two screws at each level. And what was amazing is that he was in so much pain. But as I scanned him energetically, it was just one screw. And I didn't realize I could do this, but I energetically took one screw out and just observed it and then relax the tension in it, and all of a sudden, that eased the pain in his back. And, you know, people have pacemakers, or I'll tell you what, people that are hydrocephalus, you know, they produce too much cerebral spinal fluid. You see these kids with large heads. They have to have surgery, and they put a shunt in there. When they put that shunt in there to drain the extra fluid, that whole side of their body is incredibly tense because it's a foreign object inside of them. And I will energetically work that shunt, and all of a sudden, that whole body just relaxes. I've done that with pacemakers. Oh, I had a woman in my class I was teaching that total body balancing with. And usually by day three, everybody's feeling great. But this one woman was feeling terrible, you know, and I go to evaluate her and everything is still a mess. Like, oh, my God. And so I found out that she has breast implants and she also has an IUD. And these are the things that was actually disturbing her. These are foreign objects. Yeah, for sure. And energetically, I balanced that. And all of a sudden, that opened everything you know, uh, in her body. So, and, and people who um, wear the CPAP machine at night, you know, they have difficult time sleeping and they snore too much and that. Sometimes I bring them in and I treat them with that CPAP machine on. And, you know, I'm always looking, what are they doing at home? And I'll tell you what's causing a lot of problems is Apple Watches and Fitbits. Because it's just because of, uh, and, yeah, they're constantly, you know, sending signals out. And you try evaluating someone with the watch on and watch off. And I had uh, one woman, you know, she, um, she just took the watch off because she just because I was treating her, and everything was moving well. And she puts the watch back on, and it kind of undoes everything. And the next time she came in, it was like I did nothing. And I said, leave that watch off for a while, and that made the difference, you know. So I, I did cell phones, you know. I try to, you know, get clock radios. You try to keep those away from your head. You don't realize how different electronics and that can affect power lines, can affect your body as well. Oh, exactly. Wi-Fi, you name it, right? Oh, yeah. And when I'm teaching, everybody's got their cell phones, so everybody's getting bombarded by all this stuff. That's right. You try evaluating someone, you know, we had, a, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I was in Vermont teaching, and one of the ladies' husband is a cop. So we brought him in, and, and he had his whole you know, uniform on. So I lied him there, and I was evaluating him because he's got, you know, the belt, the gun, you know, the everything on his body, and his starchy shirt and shoes. 
So I tried to lift his legs up 20 degrees. He, his whole body was rigid. So he took his shoes off. That made a difference. Took his belt off, his gun off. That made a difference. Took his shirt off. That made a difference. All of a sudden, he's moving much easier. And he goes, I'm not taking anything else off, he said, right? But it made the point on how your clothing can restrict you. But he got me back the next day because he knew where I was staying, right? So I leave my hotel room, and I'm in my car, and all of a sudden, this cop pulls up behind me. And I'm going, holy crap, what's that? And I pull into where I'm teaching, and he pulls in behind me, gets on his loudspeaker, goes, get out of the car and put your hands on the on the roof of the car. And I go, crap, that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Man, you got some great stories. Oh yeah. Lots of lots of good stories there. Jeez. Well thanks. I really appreciate your time tonight. I know you're a busy, busy guy. You teach, you've got your practice and of course family life, which I hope everybody is doing well. And you're gonna be a, a grandfather pretty soon. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, gonna be a little girl. Hopefully I think her name's gonna be Claire. We'll see. Okay. Fabulous. Well, who knows, man? Maybe we'll uh, get a chance to uh, talk. To yeah, you should drive over to Armstrong this weekend. You know what? I just may do that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, and, and uh, let's see here. Thank All you right, buddy. Much, Listen, Dr. thank Campbell. you for having me, and um, Where can these uh, good luck with this uh, with this radio show. Thank you. I, I do have one more question. Where can people sure. get a hold of you if they do want uh, sessions or just want some information? Yeah, I do sessions uh, all internationally, and my email is uh, kerryjdam at gmail.com. So that's K-E-R-R-Y, J as in Joseph, D as in David, A as in Apple, M as in Mary, kerryjdam at gmail.com. My clinic number here, it's in Florida, 941-907-9250, 941-907-9250. And we have lots of people from all over the world come into Florida, and they usually come in for uh, for treatment. And, you know, if anybody wants to attend that class, I guess you'd have to be a, a, a body talker. But um, Yanya's number in, in Armstrong, I think it's 250-550-6282. And, uh, yeah, we welcome you there, and hopefully uh, I'll see you there. And uh, thank you very much. It was fun chatting with you. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much for your time. All right, buddy. Take care. Excellent. You too. Okay, bye-bye. That was Dr. Carrie D'Ambrosio from Sarasota, Florida, uh, telling us all about uh, his practice there with with the energy medicine. Gosh, I can't talk now. I'm so excited. (laughs) With uh, energy medicine as well as the physical and how they all intertwine. It's fascinating stuff. I love it. Hopefully you did too. If you have any questions, by all means, go to Van Arts Radio on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also reach me at humanperformanceexpert.com. And we'd love to uh, answer any questions or uh, receive any comments that you have. Right now, I do have some Don Henley for you with Boys of Summer here on Van Arts Radio. (laughs) 